Thank you for joining Wars of the Roses. And this is Cagliostro from the Encyclopedia of Freemasonry by Albert G. Mackey. Cagliostro. Of all the Masonic charlatans who flourished in the 18th century, the Count Cagliostro was the most prominent. Whether we consider the ingenuity of his schemes of deception, the extensive field of his operations through almost every country of Europe, or the distinguished character and station of many of those whose credulity made them his victims, the history of Masonry in that century would not be complete without a reference to this prince of Masonic impostors. To write the history of Masonry in the 18th century and to leave out Cagliostro would be like enacting the play of Hamlet and leaving out the part of the Prince of Denmark. And yet Carlyle has had occasion to complain of the paucity of materials for such a work. Indeed, of one so notorious as Cagliostro comparatively, but little is to be found in print. The only works upon which he would write, his life depend, are a Life of him published in London, 1787, Memoirs in Paris, 1786, and Memoirs Autotiques, Strasbourg, 1786, A Life in Germany published at Berlin, 1787, Another in Italian published at Rome in 1791, and a few figurative pieces consisting chiefly of manifestos of himself and his disciples. Joseph Balsamo, subsequently known as Count Cagliostro, was the son of Peter Balsamo and Felicia Bracagni, both of mean extraction, who was born on the 8th of June, 1743, in the city of Palermo. Upon the death of his father, he was taken under the protection of his maternal uncles, who caused him to be instructed in the elements of religion and learning, by both of which he profited so little that he eloped several times from the seminary of St. Roch near Palermo, where he had been placed for his instruction. At the age of 13, he was carried to the Covenant of the Good Brotherhood at Castiglione. There, having assumed the habit of a novice, he was placed under the tuition of the apothecary, from whom he learned the principles of chemistry and medicine. His brief residence at the convent was marked by violations of many of its rules, and finally, abandoning it altogether, he returned to Palermo. There he continued his vicious courses, and was frequently seized and imprisoned for infractions of the law. At length, having cheated a goldsmith named Marano of a large amount of gold, he was compelled to flee from his native country. He then repaired to Messina, where he became acquainted with the one Altutas, who pretended to be a great chemist. Together they proceeded to Alexandria in Egypt, where, by means of certain chemical, or perhaps rather by financial, operations, they succeeded in collecting a considerable amount of money. In 1776, Cagliostro again repaired to London. In London, during this visit, Cagliostro became connected with the Order of Freemasonry. In the month of April, he received the degrees in Esperant Lodge No. 289, which then met at the King's Head Tavern. Cagliostro did not join the order with disinterested motives, or at least he determined in a very short period after his initiation to use the institution as an instrument for the advancement of his personal interest. Here he is said to have invented, in 1777, that grand scheme of imposter under the name of Egyptian Masonry, by the propagation of which he subsequently became so famous as the great Masonic charlatan of his age. London did not fail to furnish him with a fertile field for his impositions, and the English Masons seemed no ways reluctant to become his dupes. But, being ambitious for the extension of his right, and anxious for the greater income which it promised, he again passed over to the continent, where he justly anticipated abundant success in its propagation, as this Egyptian masonry constituted the great pursuit of the rest of his life, and was the instrument which he used for many years to make dupes of thousands of credulous persons. During Cagliostro's residence in England on this last visit, he was attacked by the editor Morandi in the Courier di El Jura in a series of abusive articles to which Cagliostro replied in a letter to the English people. But 
Although he had a few Egyptian lodges in London under his government, he appears, perhaps from Morandi's revelations of his character and life, to have lost his popularity and he left England permanently in May 1787. He went to Savoy, Sardinia and other places in the south of Europe. And at last, in May 1789, by an act of rash temerity, proceeded to Rome, where he recognized an Egyptian lodge under the very shadow of the Vatican. But this was more than the church, which had been excommunicating Freemasonry for 50 years, was willing to endure. On the 27th of December of that year, on the festival of St. John the Evangelist, to whom he had dedicated his lodges, the Holy Inquisition arrested him and locked him up in the castle of San Angelo. There, after such a trial as the Inquisition is wont to give to the accused, in which his wife is said to have been the principal witness against him, he was convicted of having formed societies and conventicles of Freemasonry. His manuscript entitled Masonry Egyptian was ordered to be burned by the public executioner and he himself was condemned to death, a sentence which the Pope subsequently commuted for that of perpetual imprisonment. Cagliostro appealed to the French Constituent Assembly, but of course in vain. Thenceforth no more is seen of him. For forty years this adventurer, who had filled during his life so large a space in the world's history, the associate of princes, prelates, and philosophers, the inventor of a spurious rite, which had, however, its thousands of disciples, languished within the gloomy walls of the prison of St. Leo, in the Duchy of Urbino, and at length in the year 1795, in a fit of apoplexy, bade the world adieu. Thank you for watching, and please don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and comment. And if you can, please consider donating to Wars of the Rosies. Links to PayPal and Patreon are in the description. Thank you so very much.